in the midst of a church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, on this day we'll celebrate the memorial of St. Augustine, a great doctor of the church, a great theologian, the man who made all of us to realize that our restlessness on this earth will only be filled when we are in union with God. We ask for his intercession on this day. To celebrate this sacred mystery worthily, let us call to mind our saints and ask God for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you were sent by the Father to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Renew in your church, we pray, O Lord, the spirit with which you endowed your bishop, St. Augustine, that filled with the same spirit, we may search for you, the sole fount of true wisdom, and seek you, the altar of heavenly love, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, on the subject of fraternal charity, you have no need for anyone to write you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. Indeed, you do this for all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Nevertheless, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to progress even more and to aspire to live a tranquil life, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your own hands as we instructed you. The Word of the Lord. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. Let the sea and what fills it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, the mountains shout with them for joy. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity. Sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, the story of Augustine's conversion is such a great one, and uh, indeed, we can learn a lot of lessons from his conversion. We can say that the prize of Augustine's conversion is more like uh, the merit won by the mother's endurance. Yesterday, we celebrated St. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine. The woman who prayed for 29 good years for the conversion of the son. That is indeed a story or a lesson in endurance. When we look at, look at the life of St. Augustine, he led a very rugged life, a very a life of debauchery, if you must say, at some point in his life. And that could have been occasioned by the recklessness he found from his father. But the story of his conversion is a story to encourage a lot of parents and even grandparents. We have parents, maybe perhaps some in the church, or those we know, parents who are struggling with their children. Some children who depend so much on chemical substance, or some other children who have chosen a different way of life, and you are wondering, and you are asking the question, or sometimes even telling yourself, why, why did I even have this kind of child? The story of the conversion of Augustine, the story in encouragement to encourage us. And God has a way of catching up with each and every one of us. We should not give up hope. You have a friend or a niece, a family friend, a nephew or cousin you're praying for, who are battling with all kinds of things, maybe because of the, the choice they have made in life, do not give up hope on them. And we'll look about, think about the life of St. Augustine. We can say 
that we have first Augustine and the second Augustine. If you try to insert this Augustine in the parable told today, the parable of the talent, the first Augustine was not very productive. He was not productive at all. He knew he had so much. So much was given to him by God, but he did not use it to the service of God. And when we think about the second Augustine, upon his conversion, with the influences he had in his life, the mother, St. Um, Augustine of Egypt, and also St. Ambrose, they made a lot of impact in his life. And once he made a U-turn in his life, he didn't go back to his sinful ways. He became a priest, became a doctor of the church. And in fact, he's the one, he it was, who told us that the sublime reality we are always looking for outside of ourselves is within us. Is within us. We can tell that from his famous quote, Our hearts are restless until they rest in God. He knew that his restlessness came as a result of his ignorance because he was ignorant of God. And so the life of Augustine and also the life of the mother is always to encourage each and every one of us that God has a way of giving us a second chance. No one is a near-do-well. God has time for everybody. We'll learn endurance. We'll learn patience from the life of both Monica and St. Augustine. And also, there's another point to this. <coughs> Excuse me. Augustine says that um, whoever sings well, prays twice, right? It's always an encouragement also for us at liturgy to participate actively. If you can sing, open the lungs and sing. Because the one who sings very well prays uh, twice. But dear friends, Augustine was given these talents. At first, he did not use them very well. But at a later point in his life, he used those talents. We all have our own talents. In what way are we using our talents, our God-given talents, to the service of God and to the service of humanity? The story of Augustine is a, to is a story, a lesson in encouragement. That tomorrow, tomorrow may mean when we die, we are all going to give an account of what we have done. In my mind, I think Monica will go into heaven and God will have her. What did you do while on earth? I was praying for the conversion of my son. Augustine, who is in heaven now, if he is hacked, what did you do with your talent? I used it to the service of your great church here on earth. If God were to ask you and I about our talents, what are we going to say to God? It's something we have to think about and pray about. Our talents are meant to be used to serve God in humanity. Let us rise. With confidence and trust in God's mercy and providence, we bring our prayers and petitions before Him for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. For governments and world leaders, may the gospel message of hope and justice inform and direct their decisions and actions. Let us pray to the Lord for peace and justice in our homes and communities, let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may the grace of this sacrament transform us as witnesses of Christ's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. And for Geraldine Hobika, for whom this Mass is being offered, we we'll pray to the Lord. For all who have died, marked with the sign of faith, may they rest in eternal peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. In silence, let us have our own personal intentions. We ask our Mother Mary to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed 
the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son. We ask you to grant our prayers through Christ our Lord. Receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that these sacraments of your loving kindness may be for us a sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your seven mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do, 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with Saint Monica, Saint Augustine, Saint Gregory the Great, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, who we'll pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our saints, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer that same sign of Christ's peace to each other. I use a great holy spectacle of only misery and obese. I use a great holy spectacle of only misery. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
So says the Lord, you have but one teacher, the Christ, and you are all brothers. Let us pray. May partaking of Christ's table sanctify us, we pray, O Lord, that being made members of his body, we may become what we have received through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace and in love to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. May you have a blessed day.